Hi friends, now we have put the data in the software and previously we calculated the resistance of the substation, we have calculated what is the conductor size of the substation of the mesh and the next output or next calculation that we need to do is uh, to calculate step and touch potential. So step and touch potential is basically uh, is uh, very important for human safety. So, in, for a substation, uh, you cannot just consider yourself when you're walking through the substation as a hazard-free area. Even you, if you are walking through the substation and you are taking steps, and if the substation mesh is not properly designed, if the earthing system is not properly designed, and there is a fault uh, on the line even, which is near to the substation, uh, there could be um, unsafe voltages between your two steps so um, that might uh, risk your uh, life also uh, similarly um, it might be in the normal condition the step potential the touch potential is very less but when there is a fault obviously huge fault current is flowing and each of the structure is contributing uh, in the fault. So you can consider it as a source and a load is in the shape of uh, so many uh, number of resistances, uh, parallel paths. So each structure, even the buildings, foundations, the pipes, which are water pipes which are installed, uh, anything which is grounded uh, electrically, uh, to the uh, to the grid uh, to the to the earth through a wire or it has a foundation it will contribute to uh, the fault current even it has seen that it has been seen that if the fault current is flowing it also start corrosion because it is contributing current is flowing through the uh, conductor and it start the process of corrosion so this is another topic but anyhow the substation uh, means a risky business so you have to know these concepts also that how much is important to um, do the correct uh, earthing and sizing calculation and how much is important to periodically test the earthing system for example if there is a dead shot uh, on the bus path in, in a substation or if there is a dead short uh, three phase partially three phase short circuit uh, or single phase short circuit fault uh, or uh, to with the ground then uh, the ground uh, in, in any case where fault current huge fault current is flowing through the uh, earthing system and if the fault is not clear, it took a little bit slightly more time, it should trip in zone 1, although it in, in 30, 40 milliseconds it trips in zone 2 because local production did not operate, it tripped in 350 or 400 milliseconds. So whenever well, there is a periodic maintenance that you have to do this earth resistance uh, once a year minimum, but uh, I will prefer if a system it has gone through some severe fault condition or through a fault it is uh, really uh, required to check the healthiness of the system for example if there is a huge face to ground fault on a transformer then you should check from uh, not only the transformer but you should also check the uh, mesh uh, testing of mesh conductor joints you should also test the arch resistance what is the behavior uh, the conductors everything is fine you need to energize after, even after testing the equipment you will be subject to heavy step and touch potential that will really endanger the life of people so ground potential rise is defined as the maximum voltage that a station grounding grid may attain relative to distance grounding point assumed to be at a potential of remote earth so uh, as uh, I have uh, shown you that uh, 
resistance uh, basically when current passes through a resistance there will be a potential drop so based on because forward current is falling through uh, is going through is passing through the uh, earth resistance it will obviously have some potential drop so what will happen a small level of leakage current potential rise will be a minimum but uh, when there is a severe fault the potential rise will be very high and uh, if you see uh, if you know the concept of step potential that i explained in theoretically in my previous training the near to the fault point where the conductor is lying the step potential will be extremely high and gradually it will reduce when you are going away from the fault point so potential rise mean that when there is a fault obviously the grid will contribute in feeding the fault it will feed through the resistance so if there is a more resistance uh, of the substation there will be more ground potential rise so that's why it is most important to calculate the resistance that we have calculated and based on this resistance now we will calculate the ground potential rise so we are saying that this rise is measured from a distance grounding point assumed to be at a potential of remote earth so because voltage is always it's not a absolute quantity is it's a relative quantity so uh, each voltage is with respect to some other thing so what we will do we will take we will we will just assume or consider a point a remote point where the potential the effect of fault is equal to almost zero and we will try to measure the voltages with respect to that point to the substation when the fault current maximum fault current which is provided by the utility uh, is flowing through the grid so to ensure uh, that the earth grid design is safe the calculated touch voltage for earth grid should be lower than the tolerable touch voltages so ic ieee standard 82000 provides the equation provides the uh, tolerable limit for the touch potential so it is ieee stating that the touch potential should be below this value we will see this formula Uh, and we will see uh, how, although we are using software but we should have a knowledge of this formula we will show the formula that we have used in the software and which is as per ieee a step voltage is defined as a difference in surface potential experienced by a person bridging a distance of 1 meter with his feet without contacting any other ground object during a fault so this is very important whenever there is a phase to ground fault you should no not go near uh, uh, you should not walk near or even away from this uh, uh, grounded conductor which has a huge voltage like in 11 kv or 132 you have to join your both feet together and then you can jump because uh, after each uh, step between two step there will be voltages depending upon soil resistivity might be several kvs and they are enough to kill a person so similarly uh, uh, we have to take special care in order to 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 face such conditions to ensure that the earth grid design is safe the calculated step voltage for earth grid should be lower than the tolerable step voltage so again ieee standard 82000 providing a formula which is giving that this much voltages are tolerable considering the body resistance of 1000 ohm and resistance of 2 feet in parallel the tolerable step and touch voltages can be derived as formula for a body weight of 50 kg is considered in accordance with the SEC TSP 119.10 so we have considered the resistance of uh, 1000 ohm of a body and we have considered a body weight of 50 kg as per TSP if the weight is increasing the resistance will increase also 
and we are referring this value as per TSP 9P119.10. So here uh, somebody might be wondering that uh, why we are using the ohms here or weight in our equation. The reason is the thing that kills is not the voltage, the thing which is lethal and killing and dangerous is the current. So if we somehow uh, in, uh, at the same voltages if we increase the resistance then the current will be less. So the voltage will be more uh, less lethal for example if you have uh, if a person is wearing uh, uh, insulated uh, uh, shoes then same voltages will not be lethal but if he if person is barefooted the same voltage will be lethal if a person is uh, is uh, have a wet hand and wet uh, foot and he's touching something very less voltage will be enough to kill a person so in order to calculate there is no fixed value of uh, tap and touch potential when we are doing the calculation for the substation but we are calculating the step and touch potential so that the current which is passing through the body should be within the limits that's why we are providing these parameters according to ieee standard 80 2000 equation 29 and equation 32 page number 27 formula for maximum allowable step voltage and maximum allowable touch voltage for 50 kg body weight is given below respectively so uh, we have two formulas here considering a 50 kg body resistance 1000 ohm and resistance of 2 feet in parallel the total step and touch potential can be derived as so we have uh, equation we have two equations and these equations are taken from IEEE standard 82000 equation 28 and equation 32 one equation is to calculate step potential allowable step potential second equation is to calculate allowable tolerable tolerable touch potential or voltages so you can see they have taken step potential when both fields are in parallel and uh, they have taken this equation to calculate so we have two equations and I am again explaining why these voltages are not fixed because it is important or the thing which is lethal is current passing through the body and current passing through the body is depending upon several parameters how much is the impedance or how much is the resistance which is coming in between the voltage and the ground. So this is the formula where you can see CS is correction factor for surface resistivity. So it is taken from TESP 119.10 para 3.1. So in our case we have taken the resistivity of asphalt, resistivity of wet asphalt and that is 3000 ohm per meter because this is an indoor substation and you don't have uh, outdoor switch yard so we are we, most of the uh, cases you will see the asphalt here and we have used the resistance of asphalt um, and then uh, if it is an outdoor substation where you have installed uh, you have where you have put the uh, gravel or crushed stone then depending upon how much uh, what is the resistivity and characteristics of uh, asphalt and at how much um, meters or centimeter of the thickness of this asphalt you are using at site you have to put this value in order to calculate uh, the uh, uh, correct step and touch potential HS you can see is a, is a thickness and time is basically is the duration of shock current clearing time of backup protection so how much time backup protection will take to clear the fault so here you can see that if backup protection is taking more time not only it is endangering or it is uh, 
uh, it, it is endangering the equipment life, equipment healthiness, but also if, if someone is working in the field, then it has to also to experience a fault. Even the person is standing in the substation and there is a fault, though then he has to fa face some voltages uh, uh, around the step, or if it's, it is touching something, then it has to bear the voltages uh, during the specific duration time. So we have considered the fault clearance time for the backup production is 0.5 seconds. So based on above formula, touch and step voltage are calculated by software as follows. So we have put the values in the software and again the we have the software is using the above formula as per IEC. Okay, and it is giving the results. Tolerable touch voltage is coming is 662 volts, and tolerable step voltages are coming as 2176.3 volts. So these are the tolerable touch and step potentials. So based on above formula, tolerable touch and step potential as follows. So it is confirmed that we are using a formula provided by IEC and we got this value so it means that now we have to achieve uh, our step and patch potential in our substation should be less than these values so thank you very much next topic we will determine the maximum grid current and ground potential rise thank you